What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Road to Redemption podcast turn book channel. I am, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williamson. It's great to be back with you. Today, we are talking about giving up self-help books. I wish that I had a self-help book to grab and show you guys. Oh, look, mine. I released a book. It's coming out on April 11th. It's not a self-help book. It's a memoir. It's my story. And I'm telling it, I call it a romantic memoir because it's the story of my love life and, you know, the tragedies and traumas and all that stuff that go on there. It's here, baby. But today we're talking about getting rid of self-help books. My book is supposed to motivate people. That's why I lumped it in, kind of. I think some may see it as a self-help book. But today I have read all the popular ones. The Atomic Habits, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, The Five Second Rule. I have a whole list here. I usually, because this was early on in my consumption of books when I started reading um, like self-help, that was really the first way that I got into it was I wanted to better myself. And I just, I knew of these popular books that I kept hearing all over the place. Anyway, we can go over a few, um, even like Mal- Malcolm Gladwell books, Talking to Strangers and Making Friends, The 48 Laws of Power, um, David Goggins book, you know, any of those things, Jocko Willink, Extreme Ownership is a great one. Um, some of them offer more than others, and I don't want to overgeneralize, when, which I'm already doing by saying you should stop reading self-help. That's just the title of a YouTube video, guys. You can read whatever the hell you want, right? Right. Okay. The reason that I don't read self-help books anymore and I don't buy them anymore, um, like Jay Shetty's book, I read a lot of books about meditation, Sadhguru, um, Inner Engineering, the um, Breaking the Habit of Becoming Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. A lot of different varieties of self-help book that you can go down the rabbit hole of, Anthony Robbins, all these types of people, right? And that's not even talking about actual literature, like the Tao Te Ching and this type of stuff, right? So that's totally separate. If you're getting into like Ram Dass and Will Dyer and these kind of guys, it, it's you're you're entering out of self help and into spirituality, but it still falls in the same line. So that would the point that I'm rambling about. I've been having a good day, so I'm rambling. I apologize. Um, what I'm trying to get to is. All these things offer tiny nuggets of information. That's my biggest critique of why I would not recommend people to get stuck in the self-help rabbit hole very long. Because one, most of them could be five pages long. Like the five second rule by Mel Robbins. Hey, if you have an idea that you think is good or you have something that you have to do, like get out of bed in the morning, get in the shower, do anything you you know you have to do, but you're procrastinating it, you have a five second rule now. You have to the count of five to make physical action towards doing that. There's the book. You're welcome. Saved your money because that is all the book is. Eight thousand stories of her telling people to do that. Jay Shetty, think like a monk. Hey, monks judge people too. They want to see who can meditate the longest, be the best. He saw the irony in that, so he stopped being a monk. But he knows how to meditate. He understands mindfulness, and he understands being a kind person and spreading love. I respect it. Don't need a whole book saying think like a monk. Being mindful. That's a lot of mindfulness books. Hey, be in the present. Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. Be in the present. Be there now. Don't need to buy that book now. That's it. The magic of life is in the now. Being ready to receive life now. Not worrying about whatever. Not creating a negative energy out there. There's the book. Don't need a whole however many chapters on that one. Atomic habits. Make good habits for yourself and stick to them. That's going to that's gonna enforce some self-discipline. Do the things you like to do and create habits out of them. There's that. Subtle art of not giving a fuck. Nobody cares what you're doing, so you shouldn't care what they're doing. A lot of fuck words, a lot of explicitives, which I'm supposed to chill out on on YouTube, but that's not working today. That's it. Subtle order not giving a fuck. Stop caring. Nobody really cares. Nobody is really that interested in your past or your future outside of the people that genuinely love you. So stop doing shit for other people that don't care about you. That's the basis of that book. You guys get what I'm saying? 
the the one of the better ones that I've seen was like Own the Day or Own the Morning, Own the Day by Aubrey Marcus. I like that book because it started with like, we're going to start with waking up before you drink coffee, you're going to drink water, salt, and, um, you know, like red salt and lemon juice. It's like the best detox for your whole body. It's like to get the system moving. And you do that before drinking coffee. I did that for like over a year and a half. It just became a part of my atomic habits that it was like my morning routine was wake up before coffee, drink that because that was applicable and it made fucking sense. Now it was also like, take a cold shower, move your body for 30 minutes before doing anything else. And you're like, okay, I can move my body. Fuck that cold shower noise. I'm not doing that. I did cryo for a long time. It doesn't really work. And it's one of those things where you're like, some of these guys are just telling you their morning routines, which is what TikTokers do every single day. So I respect it. They just put it in book form. The books that I gain the most from in the self-help realm is when someone's just telling their story. That was my favorite part of Jay Shetty's book was when he was just telling his story and what he did. Um, sometimes we can get a little rambly when it comes to telling our own stories because we're trying to give context without telling the whole story because you never really can, right? Unless you were there, you don't know. And it's hard to even retell it because there's different perspectives. There's other people's see of how it went, which is their perspective. And I, I don't know. Also, and this is the one that I think I'll end with just for today. We'll make it a short episode. Reading self-help is good. I think one of the better self-help books is Extreme Ownership. Got a little redundant, but it's take ownership for every wrong thing that happens in your life. Somehow it can be linked back to you. So therefore it is your fault. Take responsibility for absolutely everything. Never pawn blame off on somebody else for anything ever. I took that to heart. I really took extreme ownership of my life for like a, a, at least a solid and a half year and a half, two years. And my life changed drastically. It, it's having extreme ownership is also setting extreme boundaries, setting yourself apart as a leader. Um, a lot of that you I think a lot of men could use that in today's day and age the books like David Goggins where I get hard and never quitting and all this shit where it's like I'm gonna go run 150 miles and tape my feet up with duct tape while I eat a granola bar and a mint I gain nothing from that his story is inspiring he lost a ton of weight became a Navy SEAL some of his career seems to be questionable but he wants to help people. I respect that. So I read his first book, did not, did not indulge in the second. But going through these, we can find these self-help guys and almost see them as gurus or mentors where then you put yourself in this place where you're always being the, the student to a teacher. You're not that broken, right? You're not so broken that you need to dedicate your entire life to reading all self-help books. Drink some decaf and read fiction for a minute. Like, it's gonna be okay if you don't constantly progress in your life. Meaning, every day is not gonna be some grand celebration where someone calls and you make the deal that changes it all. And it, it doesn't work that way. <clears throat> not in real life, not in real sustaining business, not in relationships, not in anything. Does something just constantly erode at itself to the point of improvement where you're constantly saying, well, I'm trying to nick this thing apart and pull it apart to bring out its best. It's like, but you're destroying it. You're also destroying the beauty in it. When you're constantly trying to change something and, and make something yourself when it, you're doing self-help, but look at yourself as something you love. I think you should always do that. It's the rule that I have with my kids is like, you don't talk to them any other way than those are people that you love. If you're going to speak to my children, you speak to them like they're people you love or don't talk to them. But we have to look at ourselves that way too. When it comes to self-help, it goes into self-care, which is like, if I wouldn't say that to someone I love, I'm not going to say it to myself. So therefore, I can find ways that I find fault or ignorance in myself, and I can choose to improve on that. But I'm not constantly painting this picture that I'm this damaged project that needs to be put back together, because then I project that out onto, onto the world, which leads people into spirituality. And that's how you find manifestation and quantum theory and all this shit, where you're like, 
oh, my thoughts become my actions, which creates my reality, but it all starts with my thoughts. If I can control my thoughts and really deep dive into my intuition and myself and get to know myself and stop with all these fucking facades that I'm putting out, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. And then I can really present to the world, not to people, the universe as its whole. I can present the most honest version of what? What it already presented to itself. We are, I truly believe, we are the universe observing itself for its own enjoyment. It created us. It's fucking with us. It's helping us. It's changing things. And we are very much a part of that. A part of that is to respect what it created and stop constantly tearing it down as something that needs to be fixed. That's why I say don't read self-help books anymore. Read them. Read them in between a couple nonfiction books. Read in between a couple fictions, then a nonfiction. You know, self-help is kind of in a, in a league of its own. A lot of them just suck. If you go to like a bookstore and just like walk into the self-help book, a lot of it is just so cringe. You're like, fuck me, I can't take this. It's just so pretentious, a lot of it. Let me help you become a millionaire without doing shit and passive income and all this, you know, the four-hour work week and all this bullshit. I've read all those books. Like, there's no such thing as a four-hour work week. I don't give a fuck who you are. It, not if you're going to be successful. That's a tagline, just like the video, you know, headline of this video is. It, it's all for your entertainment in a lot of self-help books, uh, especially when you get into like the the financial side of things. Uh, Tony Robbins flirts with it, but I, I still like Tony a lot. Um, a lot of the finance stuff becomes, let me tell you why I'm this and you should buy into my program and join my 10x Grant Cardone project, you fucking dork. You're not going to become a millionaire by ripping people off, Andrew Tate. You're not going to become a fucking millionaire because you buy someone's book and learn about what they do in their morning. That's not how it works. It's encompassing learning as a whole about not just yourself, the world around you, and how it actually works. So you have to get out of self-help and get into creation, imagination, history, technology the future these kind of things you need to focus on that less than you're focusing on like who the president is red ties blue ties what madonna's face looks like what j-lo's ass is currently in the shape of while she's marrying ben affleck what are we talking about that's why people turn to self-help in initially is because they go i can't take this other stuff anymore i'm gonna work on me respect to the game just don't get lost in a in a hole of erosion right I love you so very much, and I will see you in the next episode.